Hey everyone, my name is This, and today I'm going to talk to you about this. This is a video for other technical writers like me, but also more broadly for any professionals who use Adobe RoboHelp to create help content. Now if you use Adobe RoboHelp, you know it allows you to write content in a single source and then generate different outputs from that single source to different formats like HTML, PDF, Microsoft Word, and XML. This video will focus on the word output. Now the problem is the default word output that you can generate looks something like this. Simple but not very exciting. You're probably going to want to customize this for your own needs. I'm going to show you how to go from this default output to a much more interesting and colorful one. Now I am gearing this towards people who have an understanding of RoboHelp 9 basics. For example, you are going to need to know what topics, CSS, and master pages are. You're also going to have to have a basic understanding of single source layouts, variables, and conditions. Also, I'm going to get into some advanced Microsoft Word formatting. I am, for example, going to be modifying styles using the Styles pane in Microsoft Word. If you're not familiar with these concepts and functions, I encourage you to look them up beforehand. Now if you're a hands-on type of person and you want to perform the steps that I demonstrate in this video, you can go to the box beneath the video screen, click on the Attachments tab, and download the zip files that I've uploaded. They are RoboHelp project files, so you will need a copy of RoboHelp 9 to open them. The file called LevelX Toolset underscore before is the one you want to start with, and you'll create files in it as you follow along. And the one with underscore after is for reference, in case you want to see the final version of the files that I create in the video. Okay, let's get started. Here in RoboHelp, I've created fictional help files for a product called the LevelX Toolset, which is a tool for making video games. I'm a big gamer, so I thought that would be fun. You can see I've created my own custom CSS style sheet, a table of contents, and a bunch of topics, and I've generated all this as an Adobe Air online help output. Let me bring that into view. So here's my online help. It looks pretty good. Now, let's say I want to produce a printed version of this same content, say, for example, a user guide. For that, I would just go to the single source layouts pod, right click printed documentation, and click generate. And that'll bring up the printed documentation wizard. Now, for the sake of illustration, I'm just going to keep all the default settings, though I will change the name of the printed documentation to level x user guide. As for the other settings, I'll keep those as is and click Next. This next screen is the Chapter Layout screen where you can organize your topics into separate chapters for your print output. Again, I'm going to keep all these default settings and click Next. The third screen is for Section Layout. And here's where you can organize the major sections of your output, such as the default title page and the TOC. Once again, I'll keep all of these settings and click Next. The fourth and final screen is where you specify the source of the styles for your print output. In other words, you can indicate which styles you want RoboHelp to apply to your output. By default, the style sheet option is selected, but I want to use, from, uh, use the styles from a Word document template, so I'll choose that option. Doing so displays the name of RoboHelp's default document template called style mapping dot dot. So let's save and generate now and take a look. Among many other things, what RoboHelp is doing is going through the help files, taking all the styles that you've applied in your project, and then mapping them one by one to other styles that have been defined in the Word template. Now, since I didn't change much in the settings, I know that some style mappings probably aren't going to turn out exactly how I want. So we'll see how the document looks and identify exactly what needs to change. Okay, let me drag the output here into view. All right, and here's the title page. Right away, I can see some things that I'd like to change. For instance, I want the title to be left aligned, and I want it to be a different color. I'd also like to add a subtitle, a version number, and a company name underneath of it. Okay, here in the table of contents, there are some issues here too. I'd like the heading to be left aligned. And I can see that the getting started TOC entry has repeated itself. Also, the, the TOC entries, the way that they're indenting and just the lack of contrast here is not exactly what I want. So I'd like to change that. Uh, scrolling down here, it looks like a few of my topics should be indented when they're really not. Creating Adventures is a book title, and these topics should be indented underneath of it. So that definitely needs to change as well. 
Also here, getting started, uh, there's definitely a problem here because the heading, it looks like it's repeating itself. But it should actually be expected to some extent. After all, in RoboHelp, I have a book title called Getting Started and a topic title called Getting Started. So uh, at the very least, what I want is some contrast between those two headings to differentiate them. Also, I'd like to add some color to these headings, make them a little bit more interesting. And you can see that the read more link here is appearing. And um, it looks also like I'm getting some copyright information appearing as well. And I want those things to be removed from the print output and only appear in the online help. Lastly, the page footer here, I would like this border to be above that number, page number, instead of below it. So how do we make all these changes? Well, here's a quick overview. First, we're going to create a new printed documentation layout and table of contents. We'll create a new topic called cover page and add it to the new TOC. We'll create a new word template on which to base the print output. And finally, we'll edit the settings in RoboHelp's printed documentation wizard. So let's get started with all that. OK, so let's take that first step and create a new printed documentation layout. I'll right click the existing layout and click Duplicate Layout so that I can always refer back to the original if I want to. I'll call this Level X Toolset Print Output. There we go. It's created down here in the Single Source Layouts pod. Now for the table of new table of contents, I'm going to call this the same thing, Level X Toolset Print Output. And I am going to copy the existing table of contents. I really want them to be very similar, and you'll see why later. So there we go, there's our new table of contents for the Level X toolset print output. And now for step two, I'm going to create a new topic called Cover Page and add it to the new TOC. So in the Project Manager pod, I'll select the Project Files folder and use the shortcut Control T to create the new topic. I'll call it Cover Page. There we go, once it's created, I'll add it to the new TOC right at the top. And for the topic's title, I'm going to add a user-defined variable called application name. And you can see the heading one style was automatically applied to it in this case due to the master page I'm using. Next, I'll type in a subtitle called user guide. And I'm going to assign it the heading two style. There we go. Now for the other information in this topic, I'm going to add user defined variables, version number, and company name. Here's the version number. And down here is the company name. And I'll style those two by adding bold type to them. If I ever wanted to update these variables in the future, all I need to do is edit them in the user defined variables pod down here. And the change will cascade to wherever the variables are used. Adding these variables is a key reason I like to create a cover page topic instead of going with RoboHelp's default cover page template. By making my own topic here, I have a little more code control over what I add to it. And later, I'll show you how to include this topic as a cover page in your print output. But first, we have some more work to do. If you're experienced with RoboHelp, you know that when I generate this topic as a cover page, I'll run into a problem. RoboHelp is going to map my title and subtitle, which are currently using Heading 1 and Heading 2 styles, to the Heading 1 and Heading 2 styles in whatever Word document template I use for my print output. But of course, that's not what I want. I want to map my title and subtitle to the title and subtitle styles in the word template. And if I want to achieve this, I have to manually specify this mapping because RoboHelp is not going to do it for me automatically. Fortunately, RoboHelp does let you map styles from your project to the styles in a word template. You can do this in the last screen of the printed documentation wizard we used earlier in this lesson. In that screen, there's a pane where you can map your project's CSS styles to Microsoft Word styles. The trouble is, this screen is for mapping non-heading styles only, which means we can't map the heading styles to the title and subtitle styles that we want. Thankfully, there is a workaround. The trick is to create two new paragraph styles in your style sheet, one called title and the other called subtitle, and then apply them to the appropriate text in your cover page topic. Here's what I mean. In your RoboHelp project, right click the CSS file, click edit, and then in the styles dialog box, click new, and then paragraph style. I'm going to go ahead and call this one title, and I'll make it 18 points. And with the after spacing, I'll make that, let's say, 24 pixels. That looks OK. Now I will do the same thing for another style called subtitle. And I will make this one 
18 points, I'm sorry, 12 points, and then I'll apply italics to it. Okay, and then back in my cover page topic, I'm going to apply these styles to my title and subtitle. There we go. Now, because these are paragraph styles and not heading styles, they will both show up in the printed documentation wizard when I want to map them to the title and subtitle styles in the word template. I'll show you how this is done a little bit later. The next step in our solution is to create a new template and modify its styles. You may recall that as we went through the printed documentation wizard, we chose a default word template called style mapping dot dot on which to base our print output. The great news is we can copy that template, create a new one for ourselves, and then modify its styles. To do this, we need to navigate to where that default template resides, namely in the root of the RoboHelp project folder. I've gone ahead and navigated to my project folder directory already. Now I'll just click name to sort the files a little bit differently and scrolling down here is the template that we're looking for. Let me uh, press control C to uh, copy this and control V to paste it. I'll rename this style mapping 2 for now. And then to open it I'll right click and choose open. Now in the body of the template you can see what every style looks like. RoboHelp has listed them in alphabetical order. I'm going to expand the window here and show the styles pane for illustration purposes. If you're familiar with Word you know that every piece of content in your document has a style tag applied to it and usually you should be able to find the corresponding style somewhere here in the styles pane. Let's scroll down to find an example. Here's the footer style. I know that that's something that I want to change. I want to make that border appear above instead of below the word. So I'll do that a little bit later. Here's some good examples. The heading styles. These are styles that I know that I want to change. You can see the heading one style, the corresponding heading one style, and the styles pane here. And the same goes for the other heading styles. What I want to do is modify these styles so that they appear the way I want them to, to appear in the printed documentation output. So for example, I'll go to the style pane for heading one and click modify. Let me bring this into view. I know that some of the things that I want to change here are to make this orange. I also want to modify the, the, the font to be Hel Helvetica instead of Arial. And I want to change the before and after spacing. Let's see, let's make this 12 instead of 0 before and 12 points after. That looks good. So that's the procedure. If you know the name of the style you want to customize for your print output, find that style in the word template, then find its corresponding style tag in the styles pane, click that style tags context menu and choose modify, and then change its properties in the dialog box that appears. To speed things along, I've created a template in which I've made all the formatting changes I identified at the beginning of this tutorial. You can see that template here in my project folder. It's called level x style mapping dot dot. Now it's time to go back to RoboHelp to apply this template and to make sure the print output generates correctly. So now we're on to step four of our solution, which is to edit the settings in the printed documentation wizard. I'm going to double click on level x tool set print output this time. In the first screen, I'm going to make a couple of changes. Under conditional build expression, I'm going to choose not online. Doing this will exclude all the content that has been tagged for online help only. In my case, that means the copyright information and the read more links. Also under table of contents, I'm going to select level x tool set print output, an important step there. Everything else looks good, so I'm going to click Next. In the next screen, the first thing I'm going to do is clear the Maintain HTML Headings box. Why? Because I want my heading styles to be automatically mapped to Word heading styles. If I keep this checked, that won't happen. RoboHelp will keep my current heading styles, and I'll face some of the same issues I had in my first print output. Also, I am tempted to move my cover page topic over, but this isn't the right screen for that. I'll add it in the next screen, as we'll see. So everything else looks good. Let's click Next. In this screen, there are a few more things to edit. First, under Section Layout, let's select Default Title Page and click to remove that. This doesn't delete it forever. You can always add it back using the plus sign here. The next thing we want to do is click the cover page topic that we've been working on and add that to the Section Layout. Everything else looks good, so let's click Next. 
Just a few final steps here. First, instead of the default Word template, I want to select the Level X toolset mapping template that I created. And also down in this pane, I want to make sure that all of my styles are mapping correctly. Looks like normal is mapped to normal, subtitle is mapped to subtitle, title is mapped to title. Now in this case, I do know it should be mapped to title page title, and everything looks good. And now we're ready for the very last step in our solution, which is to click Save and Generate. And RoboHelp will map all the styles in our project to the styles in the new template that we created. OK, let's take a look at the output. Let me drag it into view over here. OK, the cover page looks great. The title and the subtitle and the variables are looking very good. Let me scroll down the table of contents. That looks good as well. The heading here is looking good, as are the TOC entries. There's much better contrast and indentation. Now, in the body of the document, there is good contrast between the chapter heading and the topic heading right here. Also, the Read More link has been removed, and it looks like the copyright information has been removed, too. And finally, the footer looks good, too. The border is above instead of below, as it was before. So everything looks pretty good. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video useful. If you want to do more research in this area, take a look at the resources I have listed below. I used all these resources as I was researching and designing this tutorial, and in my opinion, they're essential for anyone who wants to become a master in RoboHelp print output. Thanks again, and happy writing.